Hey guys, this is Demon, and I'm joined here by the Woody Man. Uh, it's going to be briefly going over a few things. Uh, to start, uh, Woody Man is going to go briefly over one wire systems and flaws of said systems. And then I'm going to go briefly over some logic gates, uh, how to put them together, and then move on to show you guys the ALU I put together. So uh, anyway, the one wire systems. A few people were commenting about them in the forum asking why a two wire system was necessary and uh, Woody played around with the one wire systems for quite a while trying to get them to work and found a few very annoying bugs. You want to explain more? Yeah, uh, I'll start with the not gate and if you look at this one it's very simple. You have uh, a bit input which uh, these two wires are basically the same input. This is the timing input, and this is the bit input. When you receive a timing signal, and no signal from here, uh, it would it would uh, start an output from here. So thus, no output equal or no input equals output. Uh, but also, if you have an input, it will cancel out what the timing piston does, and you should have uh, no output. And that should be the theory behind a NOT gate. Now, the problem is, is I can't tell you if this is going to work or not when I press the button. Due to the fact that, uh, well, I, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I have no idea why exactly it does what it does, but it does it. So I'll hit the button, and you can see the end piston fired. And it should not. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. It depends on what mood the server's in. Also, it depends on how much it depends on how much redstone is in the area. Um, when I first built this, and none of the other stuff was built around this, it worked perfectly. Well, I figured maybe it's a load issue, and I can double it up. And that's when we moved on to this one over here. And it really made absolutely no difference. All it did is somehow delay the output, and I can't figure out how exactly that happens. Um, all I can say is it's just a change in the level of this wire causes an output of this piston. So it's very strange and very annoying. And now Woody's turned over to the two and wire that, system. Join, joining the dark side. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that is that's the only reason the one wire system can't work is because one of the most basic and most important gates is iffy at best. And with the two wire system, the knock gates are simple as pie. This right here is a knock gate. Uh, it's simply achieved by inverting the positive and negative gates. So you can see here the negative crosses over to the positive and the positive to the negative. So if I hit negative, it comes out positive. It's really very simple. Uh, the other gates are not quite so simple. Uh, to make them, I used uh, I don't know, I'll call these internal gates. Uh, there's only really two of these. I don't know if you need two. Uh, this is an OR gate and an AND gate, basically. Uh, you know, simple stuff. And so to make, say, an OR gate here, this is an OR gate, an internal OR gate, between the two positive inputs, and an AND gate between the negatives. So, for instance, for there to be a positive output on this gate, one of the inputs must be positive. So I have an OR gate between the two positives to check for that. And by the same thing, if there is to be a negative here, both the negative inputs must be on. So there's an AND gate between the two negatives. I hope it makes sense. Uh, the AND gate is basically the inverse of the OR gate, if that makes sense as well. It's an AND between the two positives and an OR between the two negatives. Uh, it's, if you just think about it for a little bit, it should make sense. The XOR, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated. It, uh, I had to basically just run through every possibility on the truth table and generate an output based on that. So the top is for the negative. Uh, you have an AND between the two negatives and an AND between the two positives, and then an OR gate between the outputs of those. And then the bottom, it's an AND between positive A and negative B, and an AND between positive B and negative A, and an OR between those as well. So. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but if you think about it for five minutes, it should make sense. I hope. 
Don't let him lie to you. Anyway, this is my updated adder. A little bit smaller than the one we saw before. Which is nice. It uses only about... I think it's... Maybe 40, 40 pistons in this? Very nice. Uh, so this is the one I'm actually using in my ALU. Uh, which I... Uh, I guess not really anything else. Oh yeah! Uh, the negative versions of these gates, the NOR, NAND, and XNOR gates, is simply achieved by inverting the output wires here. So, for instance, to turn this OR gate into a NOR gate, we simply run this wire around. Very simple. There, that is now a NOR gate. So, uh, for anyone wondering about the inverse of those, they're also just as easy. So anyway, the point several of you have probably been waiting for, my ALU. Uh, as soon as the chunks load, and render very slowly. Uh, this thing coming into view now is my ALU. So it's it's pretty big. It's you know, I suppose the majority of the bulk is the 8-bit adder. God, these chunks really aren't rendering. There we go, good enough. Uh, you get the gist of it. Uh, and then this part here is the multiplexer for function selecting. And then you have the other three gates right here, uh, not, and, and or. So uh, the, the multiplexer was surprisingly simple, actually. It simply consists of... Uh, well, down here we have a decoder, which uh, is an internal AND gate between the two inputs that you want. So for 0, 0, it's an internal AND gate between the two negatives, uh, 1, 0 between positive A, negative B, so on. So uh, surprisingly simple, actually. And then those inputs come up here. Uh, each of these towers is one of the inputs, and will only and then here is your input to the entire ALU and it goes in and is split into four and the only one allowed through is the one selected by the decoder so the decoder should pull back at the exact same time as the input and the only one that will be allowed to pull back here will be the function you've selected see it's it's pretty simple uh, the outputs are all on this side uh, the adder has the actual output finding I'll do a quick demonstration just to show that I'm not just, you know, throwing random wires together and calling it an ALU. So uh, I'll select addition at 0, 0. We'll add some random numbers. Um, and just turn all these off to start. I think that's all of them. Uh, and we'll add three. Let's see. A, oh yeah, these inputs are uh, alternating. So this is A, B, A, B, A, B, so on. So for three, I have to hit this lever and this lever. Add three plus five. Why not? So I have to hit that one. And that one. 3 plus 5, or 101 plus 11. One. And as soon as I press this button, a short delay, there it went. We should have 1001 or 8. Perfect. So there you have it. It works. I'm not just bluffing my way through. And it works fast. I believe this is about 950 pistons which uh, isn't a problem anymore. Back in 1.8 there used to be a limit of about 850 pistons going at once and then the server would randomly crash for no apparent reason. But me and Woody uh, su successfully tested about 5,000 pistons at once last night without too much problem, so that seems to be a thing of the past, thank god. So uh, we don't have that limit hanging over our heads anymore. We can go crazy with our CPUs and spread them out like hell, like Woody is. <laughs> Although I must say, his adder does look very cool. Any comments on that, Woody? Your coloring scheme versus mine?
the Battle of the Walls. Alright. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Yeah.